Let's talk about some of the other earnings out this morning because we're definitely seeing some significant stock moves. UPS, let's kick it off there. Uh, the company has really uh, started to boost its margins. As we know, a lot of people are getting a lot of deliveries. And so we are seeing that show up in the numbers, which came in, particularly when you're looking at those earnings per share, well above what analysts had been anticipating. So the stock is reacting to that and showing some gains uh, for a company of UPS's size that are somewhat unusual. We don't tend to see necessarily this big of an earnings reaction, but the shares are up by nearly 9%. Uh, the company's seeing a lot of sales gains gains overseas, by the way. That's where the revenue gains were led. Um, we saw um, international sales up by 36%. Brian Sazi, I know you've been tracking these numbers pretty closely. What stands out to you? Yeah, well, I, my first instinct, I put it on Twitter uh, this morning, Julian Miles. I had to do a double take reading this UPS earnings release, adjusted operating profits up 164%. To your point, this is not the type of quarter you would see from a UPS and your first thought, well, perhaps you'll also see something along the lines of this uh, when FedEx reports in the coming weeks. Nonetheless, you know, the secret sauce here is not just the fact that they are now shipping COVID-19 vaccines, which they are, and I think this quarter reflects that. Also, you're just seeing a structural shift to e-commerce spending. You know, so as the economy uh, opened back up in the first quarter, UPS's results are telling you people are still engaging in a big way online. They may go out there and shop at a mall. They may go out in a restaurant. But their first inclination is to continue to order items uh, online. Also, too, uh, don't discount the power of new UPS CEO Carol Tomei. She has come in there very aggressively, cut a lot of costs. Uh, got people thinking in a new way so they can make decisions faster throughout their organization. And this looks to be uh, the first signs of those efforts paying off. Next key date to watch, June 9th, that's their investor day. I would expect some long-term targets from Tomei. And in many, many respects, that will be her coming out party as CEO. Yeah, and, and I think everyone can sort of guess what I'm going to say when uh, a company comes out with this kind of a quarter, which is Wall Street, once again, way too low on their estimates. Now, um, you can't just, as we've discussed, you can't just raise your estimates because you feel like it. So company didn't say anything. You know, analysts are left on the low side here. But UPS also coming out and saying they're not going to offer guidance. But it, it seems to me, and the way I read the quarter, certainly the dynamics we're talking about, UPS, it's like they don't know how good things are going to be. And so they can't guide to what those results might come in at. This time last year, it was, we don't know how bad things are going to be, so we can't offer you an outlook on the future. Obviously, UPS has a, a couple of you know interesting specific things with their business. They're completing the sale of the freight unit. That's gonna create um, you know, some distortions in the financial results over the coming quarters. But I think for the company to decline to offer an outlook in this environment shows the challenges, um, which right now remain on the upside, but are still very much part of the same theme, which is uh, we don't really know what's going to happen. It's just that, um, again, it's it's a better way. You know, that's like a positive commentary, I guess, in uh, May of 20. Well, is it May? It's April, April 2021. Then it would have been in April 2020. <laughs> It's almost May. It's basically May. I mean, May. We're going to call it. We're going to call it. May. Feels like May. Let's just, it's it's <laughs> May ascendant, May rising. Um, what's really interesting to me as well is as we get through these earnings seasons, the companies that are still like UPS not offering a forecast, and the companies that are, because a number of companies are now coming out with forecasts. So it'll be interesting to see what are sort of the differences in their businesses and their visibility. 